over the years, camera sensors have become very, very clean. Right? As compared to early on when cameras were grainy, were uh, um, out of, you know, focus, camera sensors used to even pick up a lot of, you know, um, aberrations like chromatic aberrations, what we term, you know, halation now. As, 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 time, as time goes on, we've realized that a lot of footages or a lot of sensors are becoming cleaner as they go on. Comparing the 5D Mark IV to the 750D, right? The sensor on the 5D Mark IV can work very well with noise. Let's say at ISO 1000. The same, can, the same can't be said for the 750D, right? Compare even that 750D to early on cameras, like the film cameras. A lot of us didn't come and meet from cameras, to be very honest. I didn't come and meet from cameras. But when I became a photographer, I was fully invested in digital cameras. And these digital SLRs are way cleaner than film cameras that used to be, you know, in the market. Right? Why am I saying this? Clean looks are perfect. Clean looks works very well. Clean looks are for are good for portrait shots. Clean looks are good for corporate, you know, videos where they need to see every detail they paid for and all that. No, nobody's stopping you or nobody's saying clean looks are not good, right? But what I also want to let you know is you can't just stop at clean looks. You can't just um, um, end up just producing anything clean. Well, I, I do that a lot. I used to produce, not that I used to, I still produce a lot of clean pictures, to be very honest. And in some way somehow i stylize it by adding a lot of color stories that's where my color grading comes in right so today's video i really want to talk about a particular plugin which can emulate film looks from early on from cameras that were used to you know produce images that to date are looking way better and a lot of you know cinematographers a lot of photographers a lot of creatives are trying to achieve the team at dehancer reached out to me to review this particular beta plugin software for photo editing softwares yes it's now available for photo editing softwares like photoshop lightroom capture one and affinity pro i don't use affinity pro so i don't have anything to say about affinity pro but i can talk about these three other softwares which is the photoshop lightroom and capture one i have been using this particular plugin for a month now so i think I'm in the right position to be able to talk about what this particular plugin can do for you and what it has been doing for me. I want to show you exactly what it has. I think you've seen images I've posted on my Instagram, right? And you might have loved them and you might probably think, oh, Joy is creating a new preset. Well, yes, I wish I was creating a new preset, but most of, you know, the edits was coming from this particular emulation program. So i love i love i have i have two favorite tabs i would really want to show you in this particular plugin so let's just jump right into my laptop and show you what exactly the dehancer um plugin will be doing on my images all right so back here in my laptop where most of the magic happens i would probably want to get some things right off the block so first off you can get the dehancer plugin for 199 dollars on your website dehancer.com just make sure you try and purchase it yourself i'm going to leave down in the description a link to this website and also i'm putting up you know um a promo code cjd film use that thing to get 10 percent off 199 dollars and try and purchase this particular dehancer film plugin right tools include 62 film profiles kodak 2383 print film cmy color head film grain bloom halation different vignettes user presets and many other you know tools that are included in the plugin as you'll probably be seeing in the video all right so in today's video i'll probably want to divide it into three sessions i'll do one for capture one do one for lightroom and also do one for um photoshop right so before we get into it i just want to take you through a few things that you need to know the answer capture one plugin setup guide right there's a setup guide that comes with you know the zip folder it shows you how to install and all that i want you to pay attention to this in the following dialog, select appropriate op um, options for editing, right? And this is what they need in here. Pay attention to this. We'll be using that in Capture One very soon. And also, they did mention some recommended raw settings. Correct the most severe deviations and exposure and white balance, which of course we'll probably do that. Use the linear profile contrast curve if possible. I'll show you where the linear profile is. Disable noise reduction and sharpening. Um, avoid any local enhancements which might cause visible halos, export files and all that. So the linear profile in Capture One will exhibit um, that of, you know, a log file or a log footage, right? 
the handsaw is basically made for you know davinci resolve users where they usually work on a lot of log footages from whatever footages they've shot All right so the linear response is supposed to you know mimic that for still photos so if you can see over here the base characteristic the icc profile is mac 4 right and the curve adjustment which is the linear response so the linear response if i should hold option and click on it you can see what it does right so i did that made a few adjustments pushed in my white reduced my highlight just to bring back some details and open up my shadows and also i reduced you know my sharpening and any other noise reduction processes that are going to be seen in here the next thing i'll do is right click edit width and i'll have to probably go and look for the dehancer you know um plugin on my pc i'm using a windows pc so i'm able to locate it i think for mac you can also do the same thing so just locate where it's installed on the mac then you just click on it double tap on the answer and that opens so i've been using this for a month now right the answer provided me a i mean a license for me to you know get accustomed with whatever it is i have to talk about in today's review and i think i'm in the right position to go about a lot of things so if you see my edit width i have the answer showing right here in my capture one right so let me close up for capture one and jump right into the dehancer photo app right to my left you can see film profiles to my right you can see different tabs over here i'm going to close the various tabs and i would probably like to say this before i continue whatever it is i'm about to do here in this dehancer plugin will probably be seen in lightroom and photoshop the interface for the plugin is similar for the two other you know um, editing software so there are just a minor changes you would have to do in the post processing software when it comes to lightroom and capture i mean lightroom and photoshop which you would have to look out for so let's just get into editing some of you know editing this particular image we put here so what i'll do is i'll just turn off this right, and come here um come to my print form and i'll choose kodak 2083 if you know what print forms our pfps are um they usually are characteristics on film i mean here yeah, on film when they are printed usually you can find this characteristics on the paper that is going to be used to do the printing right and the film will be applied on the paper you get to the kodak 2383 or any other you know profile that's available here just so that you get the characteristic of it when you apply the film on the paper and you print it and you get the real-time film look on your image so this is the digital version this is why the plugin is here to help you you know create a real-time um, film look or film effect on your footage right so this is the before the film look and there's an after before and after nothing has been done over here so if you take a look at the source the source has temperature tint which is similar to the temperature and tint you already know right i'm not going to do anything to that yet expand has both black points and white points and a color mode which gives you a normal and a luma curve right so with the luma you're just affecting your luminosity values and the normal you're affecting both the luminosity values and your color currently i would like to open up my blacks not crash it so open it up right and uh, right about there is fine when it comes to film emulation usually you see your shadows a bit lifted or your blacks lifted so that's a characteristic of a film look i'm going to you know crash down my whites just a little bit All right so this is the before the expand and after the expand after i'm done i usually like to work with these three um, tools here source expand and print there are further explanations to what these do on their websites when it comes to their blog posts they have an article explaining each and every tool that's available here in the plugin so i'm not really going to go into details i'm just going to show you what they do for me and what i have been able to you know learn from using the dehancer plugin so this photo plugin as a beta version 2 which is primarily for capture one and you know affinity pro i think the version one supported both uh, photoshop and lightroom so i'm trying to test this for capture one that's why i started with capture one then we'll later figure a way out with lightroom so these are the available films that are here right you can categorize the film into color negative motion picture um color positive black and white instant exotic right so let's see um color negative if there's anything here in color ne negative i would like to use kodak pro image 100 kodak portra 
Kodak Supra, Kodak Ultra Max, the scene. Okay, let's go to color positive. I think, yeah, Kodak Ektachro. Yeah, this is one of you know the film profiles I like to use when I come to the Dehancer um, plugin. The Kodak Ektachrome works most of the time for all of my images and I fall in love. Sometimes when I really want to achieve that faded out film look, there's a Polaroid Polachrome 35mm Experiments 1986, right? But today's video I'll use this and you can see here the push and pull EV or push and pull EV, right? This is related to, uh, I think, exposure and also color contrast for the uh, for the available film profile 63 film profiles that are here right just because you would have to you know um um film film profiles react differently with light right so the more you expose it to light the different color contrast and exposure values you get so if i should move this to the right with this particular film you're seeing an, an increase in exposure and a decrease in exposure right when i go to let's say let's go to all films and i use an adox color implosion when i move it to the right you can see a change in color contrast right instead of exposure values you're seeing color change instead all right so i would just reset undo and so that we can go back to we using the ectachrome all right, so we are back. We're using a Kodak Etachrome E100. The next thing I would like to do is to come to the color head before I move to film grain, halation, and bloom and vignette. All right, color head is more like the master color balance tool you can find in Photoshop and even in Capture One. All right, this particular tool. Let me just go back to Capture One and show you the tool I'm talking about. So, in color balance, we have this master tool. Right, um, you can work your way around it. Okay, so back to the answer. If I want to make any changes, I would probably like to say maybe push some blues into this. And if I feel like the adjustment is too huge, I'll hold control or command on the keyboard. You can see these two parentheses show up around the circular, you know, knob over here. You can just make minute changes to, you know, the set photo. I'll probably like to add some cyan to this. and let's see some greens let's see the before and after right so just minute adjustments you can see gang over here when i click on gang and i make any adjustment to the various sliders that are here they all move in the same values right preserving exposure whenever you play around with colors colors can be found in your exposures also so if you want a clear example try and move let's say your temperature value in lightroom or photoshop or capture one you can see the change and you know um your exposure values when you change the said photo into black and white so this gives you the option to preserve your photo i mean preserve your exposure here in the app the impact is relatively similar to um, what we already know as um, opacity. So if you want more of the impact, we just keep it 100. If we want to reduce the impact of the color head, we just reduce it. Furthermore, explanations of what the color head does can be seen in the article post. So I'm sure I'm going to link it down in the description. Just make sure you check it out. Right. So the three other tools that make film emulation, film emulation is film grain, Halation and bloom. Let me quickly go through film grain. Immediately, I click on the film grain. You can see these uh, available tools over here. So the size of the film, amount, resolution. One thing I like about the engine here, when it comes to film grain in the Dehancer Photo plugin, is such that you're able to, you know, maintain the resolution of the image, or in real time, make sure it looks like a film photo that has been shot, right? With film photos, the characteristic of the resolution is seen to be a little bit um, blurry as compared to, you know, when you're trying to use other softwares to emulate film. So I'm going to keep it at 50 in between a sharper resolution and a blurry resolution. 
and you're also able to control where you see most of your grains right so i'm going to keep it out of the midtones just because i want to see you know a little bit on the midtones same can be said for the shadows but when it comes to the highlights any negative film has a lot of grains in their highlights so a little bit above the midtones and the shadows right and you have the option to also change the color composition of your grains do you want it to be as colorful as you can see over here right, let it process right so when i move all the way to the right you can see how colorful the grain becomes this is also a characteristic of um, most of the colored film um, cameras that used to be in the system so i'm just going to keep it at 53 and i'm okay and good to go right so film type there's the negative let me zoom in just so that i can see the difference so there's the negative which i usually like to use a lot and the positive which i like to stay away from right so this is how the positive is it's more like it's embedded in the image with the negative is on top of the image which is usually what i like to use so i keep it here and the mode i only leave it at digital i want it to be analog so when i turn it to digital just take a look at how the grains are going to be applied on the image right not something i'd like to see i like analog more than digital right so to the very next two tabs which will probably sell the film look we are going for let me turn it on both of them on right and right off the top you can see the change that we've made so with halation when i turn on the mask mode you can see um what the halation um is doing to the image i mean the areas to which you can find the halation halation in our modern time is what we will probably term as chromatic aberration i feel like later in the future when we're looking back at time we can probably try and emulate what we were getting as you know aberrations here or during this time so maybe in the future chromatic aberration will be appreciated like how halation is appreciated now and not back then when it wasn't appreciated okay so these i will explain in the article as well so i probably like to make minor adjustments i had a friend telling me halation has to be felt and not seen i'm yet to see that all right so i'm going to increase the impact because i want to see it not feel it i right, turn on the max mode and probably change the hue of the halation just because you are uh, predominantly in a yellow scene i would want to see the hue in the red scene and halation also affects your midtones just so you know so you have to be very careful of how much you apply on your image right so and i'll go to bloom bloom is more like putting on a pro mist on your lens whenever it is you're shooting right it's a characteristic of you know um having softer looking images right the idea is that when light hits your pro mist your pro mist is supposed to have a filter on it where it softens up the light and makes the spread of the light on the subject look more like a glow right so the idea also usually you usually get to see more of the effect of the bloom around more highlighted areas so the more you apply it the more you increase the impact the more the engine looks for the very minute parts of your images and pushes you know the um, the effect so when i turn on the max mode you can clearly see where you're going to see majority of you know the bloom as you can see on her cheek on her forehead so i'm just going to reduce it i need the details right not a lot of the bloom right so and i'm going to reduce the source limiter so by moving it to the right i'm reducing the source of the bloom i turn off the max mode and this is the before right and after the bloom so with the film green i feel like i need more of the film and i'll increase the size of the grain also right with vignettes we all know how the vignette works i really don't use it much here right but it works similarly to what you can see in other editing softwares um yeah that's that's that to using the enhancer to make this film 
emulated um, look on this my image I shot with my 5D Mark IV when I visited White Sands some time ago. Also, you can create a preset from whatever it is you've done. So if you have similar looking images you'd want to work on with this particular plugin, right? Don't mind all these ones I've created. You can just create a preset with the name you would probably want and also all the other things I've done so far, it shows here with the exception of the vignettes, right? And I just add presets, then you can see it's down here. So if I should let a process, if I should say reset whatever it is we've done, which sends us back to this and I click on the Kodak Ecta Chrome, it sends me back to what we did when the adjustments were made and you get to also make other adjustments if you want. Before that, I think let me just cool down the picture a notch, right? And say maybe increase the tint a little bit. All right, I think that sells it. Let me see. Yep, that sells it. I like what I'm saying. All I have to do is just right now click OK, and it sends me right back into Capture One. So right here in Capture One, you can see what we did, right? This is the before and this is the after, right? It clearly doesn't look like what we finished up in the Dehancer plugin, which usually is a problem I have been facing for a while now. So I would like to mention the kind of problems when I'm done with all the other softwares. But yeah, this is clearly how this will look after, you know, I fix the, um, the level values. So this, let me hide the tools. Sorry. So in full screen moon, this is the before, um, I mean, before um, the Hansa plugin and this is after the Hansa plugin. So this is the clean look I did mention when I started talking about um, the Dehancer plugin in the video, right? So you can have a clean looking image, fix your exposure values, your, you know, temperature, Kelvin, white balance values, maybe color graded just to give you that clean look. And if you want to stylize it the more, you can just send it to the Dehancer plugin and it does all the amazing work for you. So you can clearly see the difference, right? We have the halation around the hair, around the shoulder, some around the hand and also the grains, the colorful grains. If you don't want the colorful grains, you can reduce the saturation in there, right? So let's just jump right into Lightroom and also talk about the difference when it comes to, you know, using this particular plugin in Lightroom. And I'll probably mention that also in Photoshop. Photoshop and Lightroom are similar, so I might probably not go into Photoshop. So let's just jump into Lightroom and make a few adjustments there. So let's close this. All right, so here we are in Lightroom and I want to make some things clear. So literally it's the same guide you're going to get how to install it and all that, how to update your um, film profiles, the CCT film profiles that are available. Now I want to mention this in here. Working with photos in RAW, when it comes to Photoshop and Lightroom or Adobe Camera RAW, you'd have to also mimic the flat look I mentioned in capture one by using the linear response but here in lightroom they've given you certain adjustments to make right um adobe standard exposure minus one contrast minus 40 blacks plus 60 uh, linear curve sharpening zero noise reduction zero color space and bit depth right if you're shooting with the iphone and using apple raw dng that's all that i don't use that i don't use that to take pictures so you're going to be working on this image so like they said we should change this to what adobe standard right minus one exposure minus um 40 i think am i am i correct yeah minus 40 plus 60 blacks right um 60 blacks then a linear curve so this is a linear curve nothing has been done to it um, our detail which is a sharpening at zero and what else what else so what's so limiting about this is you can't make any other adjustment just because you've been able to you know tr you're trying to mimic um the flat look here but i think i think we can do a few right maybe reduce the highlights not really open up the shadows because the shadows are open up right increase the clarity right click edit in then edit in the hands of lightroom so the reason why i have this here um the guide shows you how to you know mimic this here or have this 
the answer Lightroom X here. It shows you all the adjustments to make. So if I should come back into the Lightroom, I think you're given the same uh, raw recommendations, right? So TIFF sRGB 16 240, that, 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 that. Okay, so back to Lightroom, we have all that. Then just click on edit. So like I mentioned, you clearly see similar, you know, interface. It's not different plugins, the same plugin. The only difference here is the adjustment you have to make on your image to get that flat looking feel. To get that flat looking feel. Where am I? Yeah, to get that flat looking feel before you jump right into, um, you know, you jump right into the Hansa. Right, so let's make a few adjustments here and there. Make sure Kodak, let me hide this first. Right, exposure, contrast, color density, temperature will make it a bit colder, and add some greens in here. color head maybe some you know warmth cyan and a bit of magenta into this well, let me add some reds instead Film, Helation, and Bloom. I'm just going to, you know, reduce the exposure because I, from my previous video, I think I've mentioned that to see the effect of color grading, you, you just have to, you know, um, work with a wall exposed image. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll link it up here. Just make sure you watch and learn a thing or two about color grading right so i think the film grain is too much and the midtones reduce it and the shadows also reduce it right and i'll probably keep it in the highlights where most of the work will be i'll probably reduce also the color head this time i'm not looking for a colorful grain increase the size a little bit right with the bloom and halation i like where they are because i didn't even see much of it so what I would like to do is to amplify the halation. Let's see if we can clearly tell if the bloom is making much of a difference. So this is before the bloom and this is after the bloom. I think there is, right? So I made it too cool. Let me too warm too warm okay so we clearly have an image right so let's see a preview before and after before and after i'll click on ok and voila we'll probably also have to see that in lightroom also let's just wait lightroom right I still face the same issue here, so I'm just going to fix the blacks in terms of the contrast levels as compared to what we saw when we were editing the Dehancer app. So yeah, this is what we've been able to do so far. I did mention that the halation also affects your midtones, so as you can see, it's affecting my midtones, but it has achieved the purpose I wanted it to achieve. Okay right so concerning photoshop and lightroom they literally have the same interface right so i don't really have to go into photoshop because if you've worked with adobe camera raw you clearly know that it's the same settings or the same interface you're seeing here in lightroom that you're going to see in adobe camera Raw with just different names but the engine here in lightroom works the same way clearly you can tell that with photoshop you also have to do the same standard profile and all that so yeah, this is 
what the plugin does for you as a photographer if you want to probably emulate film on your images that you have shot if you want to have a real-time looking um, film image you can use the dehancer plugin for 199 use my short code or use my promo code to get 10 percent off and just enjoy using this particular plugin right so so far so good the plugin has done exactly what it said it would it has emulated foam for me the engine in there works so much well right so they are right off some things i would want to mention when it comes to using this particular plugin right let me let's open it so let me copy this the settings we did over here to say another image right then let's open this in the enhancer plugin i'd want to mention a few things about what i think they can improve when it comes to the dehancer plugin right so there are a few things i would like to mention so when it comes to any editing software or any plugin i feel like but before i get into that i feel like because a beta version and you're trying it out um i would like to mention a few things i hope they improve in the full version I, I have seen videos for that of the first or the earlier versions and I don't think they did anything to it but for the beta version to work for Capture One that's kudos to them. I'd want to mention a few things right when it comes to using Lightroom to even edit your photos right you probably have to see real life or real time the changes each and every um, profile is giving you. So when I come to say Lightroom, which Lightroom is already open, and I go to let's say profiles, and say I'm using any of my profiles, you can clearly tell that when I hover the cursor on the available profiles here, it shows you a preview of what you are going to get as an editor in you know the um, um, in the particular software you're editing. And so I wish and then full version they give you a lifetime preview instead of me having to click on it before i can see the preview right certain images are huge enough to wait for the processing so i'd love to see that in the updated version right so secondly i have noticed that you're not able to use you know the arrow bars to even move around right clearly you can tell when i tap on the arrow bars all it does is move up and down the sc it scrolls up and down the available profiles that are here i would have loved to see a scroll bar instead of me using the arrow key to move up and down and the arrow key should actually be used to you know have a selection based um you know engine when i probably want to move around these um profiles that are available right so with the other thing I also want to mention, you can't edit multiple images in this particular plugin. You would have to edit each and every picture single-handedly, right? So you pick up this image, you edit it, and when you're done, you can't edit another image right in here. You would have to open the Dehancer plugin. I feel like the Dehancer plugin is so heavy on your PC. They should give you the option to, you know, be able to edit two or three or four more pictures at a go whenever it is you want to you know work on images or probably produce film enhanced emulation images in the plugin yeah so i think that's also one thing i would want to see fixed so there's also one thing i want to i want to mention here about the dehancer pro i feel like you need to have little side notes to the various you know tools that are here what they do and what they can do for you as an editor here if you're new to the answer like i was when i started using this i had to figure my way out right so if you're new to the answer i feel like they should provide little side notes like how you know capture one shows you okay this brush a draw max brush uses brush strokes to draw max yes i know um you know details of this has been provided on the article on the blog site but i would also love to see that inbuilt in the app where you know i just have to um hover the cursor on the particular tool and it shows me exactly what the tool is doing in my image so i feel like they can also improve upon that 
which will probably help anybody who's going to use this as an editor one last thing before i leave one last thing before i leave i feel like they can make this plugin an inbuilt plugin instead of a second window plugin so just like um a lot of you know other tabs that are available here if they can make it an inbuilt plugin for the various tabs here in let's say capture one and maybe i don't think they can do that for lightroom sure no problem but with photoshop like um like how retouching academy has an inbuilt plugin i feel like the answer should also have a similar look when it comes to photoshop where you can just tap on the you know um tool and it opens up in the app so it should be an inbuilt app for photoshop and maybe capture one but for lightroom you know we can pardon that so yeah that's that 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 should be it about the hansa so far so good the hansa has done everything like i said for me and i feel like this is a it's a good plugin for all those creatives out there who are looking to creating film emulated looks on their images i'll probably do a video on the hansa for davinci resolve i've started using davinci resolve and you know bit by bit i'm learning a thing or two but the dehancer plugin has made it quite easier for me to work around my video footages when it comes to editing my looks in you know in the hands i mean in davinci i even used the dehancer to you know edit my earlier footage when i was when you guys saw me before we entered into my laptop okay so smack the like button if you love this video if you love what i did with dehancer and if you probably like to enjoy the benefits of the answer they have a two weeks trial you can just register sign up and enjoy the answer for two weeks and if you want to purchase it why nine nine dollars if you want to use my promo code tjd film use it get 10 percent off and enjoy the answer plugin thank you so much and i'll see you in my next video peace